Good morning, everybody. If you want to follow along, we'll be starting the second chapter of Proverbs this morning. Proverbs 2, beginning in verse 1. And uh, as a way of introduction to the second chapter, uh, several really uh, unique things in uh, the second chapter. Uh, for one, it is a bounty of wisdom. Uh, it is just uh, loaded with wisdom. Uh, it is, um, a reason you can see by the very first verse, my son. Uh, it is the um, words of a father uh, to, uh, to his son. Uh, there's several things about uh, this chapter that um, are not really apparent in English, uh, but in uh, the original language. Um, it was written in such a way that it would be easier to memorize. Um, in Hebrew, it is one long sentence. Um, it has 22 lines, uh, and each of those 22 lines uh, starts with the next letter uh, of the Hebrew alphabet. So if it was in English, the uh, first line would start with A, the second line would be, the third line would C, and so on. Uh, and so it's written that way for um, the, part, the point of, of being able to memorize uh, and learn uh, this, uh, the wisdom uh, that um, it shares. And um, so as we begin to uh, look at these words, we're seeing, um, this is my son, if thou will receive my words and hide my commandments with thee. So that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom, and apply thy heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding. If thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as for hid treasures. And uh, so it's beginning with uh, the father uh, encouraging the son uh, to begin a lifetime of searching uh, for that wisdom uh, that he would begin by obeying the words of his father and begin to uh, seek the wisdom uh, that uh, the law of God, the word of God uh, reveals. Um, and so notice another thing about this opening verse, my son, if you will receive my words. Uh, and so uh, it is optional. Uh, wisdom is optional. Obeying the commandments of uh, the Word of God, obeying the principles laid down for us in the book of Proverbs uh, are optional. And we know that many people uh, choose uh, not to receive those words. If you receive my words uh, then and do these things, uh, then you will uh, be blessed. And so uh, many refuse uh, that, and in particular in the role uh, that we see here, in the role of uh, a father uh, trying to teach uh, their child. Um, we know that in many cases um, the child refuses uh, the wisdom uh, of their father, uh, their mother. They refuse to hear uh, that uh, that knowledge that they're trying to uh, to pass on. And so uh, we are encouraged here by example uh, to receive the words, but reminded that we don't have to. Uh, if we don't want to receive the words. If we don't want to hide the commandments, uh, if we don't want to incline our ear to wisdom, if we don't want to apply our heart to understanding, if we don't want to cry after knowledge, if we don't want to lift up our voice for understanding, we don't want a seeker of silver, and we don't want to search for her as hid treasures. Now, I'm going to get ahead of myself here. Verse 5 says, Then shall thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Uh, he's saying it's not a given. It's not automatic. We have to be willing to uh, listen, to incline our ear. We have to uh, be willing to uh, understand and pay attention when God uh, is speaking uh, to us, uh, that um, we open uh, our ears, uh, as he says here. Uh, we allow it to come into our heart. Uh, 
that uh, the Word of God, uh, to use the New Testament uh, statement, transforms us uh, so that we are not uh, conformed to the ways uh, of this world. Uh, he says in verse 3, cry after knowledge. Uh, if we want the wisdom of God, we have to ask for it. We have to look for it. Uh, we have to pray for it. Lift up your voice uh, for understanding uh, that God would reveal uh, that wisdom to us. And the simple fact is that um, many believers, those who profess Christ, um, they don't receive wisdom from God simply because uh, they have chosen not to look for it. They have chosen not uh, to ask for it. They have uh, sin in their life. Um, others uh, just don't really believe that God can help them. And so they choose, uh, you know, others think they're smart enough on their own, um, whatever reason, and they determine they don't want to hear uh, from God. But he says you have to look for it. You have to seek it in verse 4, like uh, like hidden uh, treasure that you have to, uh, to search for and to go after uh, that we might have uh, the wisdom uh, of God. And uh, so the opening words of this chapter as we eavesdrop on this father, you can almost picture uh, the father with his young son sitting on his knee. Uh, sharing this wisdom. We're allowed the privilege uh, of, uh, again, eavesdropping, listening in on the conversation uh, that uh, we have uh, several principles in this past. Uh, we find God's wisdom when we, uh, in God's Word. Uh, we find God's wisdom uh, there. We find God's wisdom by listening uh, when God speaks by uh, submitting ourselves. Uh, one of the reasons many people don't find the wisdom of God uh, is because they want to do it their self. Uh, we find wisdom in prayer. We find wisdom, uh, as the final verse says, uh, by seeking uh, for that wisdom. Uh, and so as we go through uh, this great book of Proverbs, uh, my prayer is that we will um, have an attitude adjustment, I guess you'd say, uh, that we would recognize the source of wisdom uh, and go after wisdom, seek wisdom, uh, how God would have us to conduct ourselves and to live uh, our life. Um, so today, you, uh, I hope you'll pray about that, think about that. Lord, show me wisdom. I want to find wisdom. I want your wisdom, not the wisdom of this world, uh, not the ideas and the thoughts of uh, this world. But God, I want your wisdom to direct me and conduct me uh, through this life. Have a good day. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning.